Star Trek, the, the original series, Return to Tomorrow. Bridge, Sulu, the reading is growing stronger, Captain. Coming from a star system directly ahead, Eura. It's not a signal, sir. It doesn't seem to even exist. It is affecting all my channels. Kirk, well, Spock, someone or something is attempting to attract our attention. Kirk, someone or something has succeeded. A business signal, distress signal, the relays have been activated. We've been given the direction to follow, but how? What's causing it, Spock? I do not know. Not even the Vulcan can know the unknown, Captain. We are hundreds of light years past where any Earth ship has ever explored. So, planet dead ahead, Captain. Becoming visual, a yellow and gold planet on the view screen. Spock, class M planet, Captain. Kirk, close to Earth conditions? Spock, with, with two very important exceptions. It's much older than Earth, and about half a million years ago. Its atmosphere was totally ripped away by some sort of cataclysm. A planet was entirely been dead since then. Sensors detect no life of any kind. Saragon. All your questions be answered in time, Captain Kirk. Kirk, are your handling frequencies open? You are a... No, sir. Saragon. I am Saragon. It is the energy of my thoughts which has touched your instruments and directed you here. Now, with this closer distance, I can speak to you at last. Kirk, who are you, Saragon? Saragon, please assume a standard orbit about our planet, Captain. Kirk, is that a quest or demand, Saragon? The choice is yours. I read what is in your mind. Words are unnecessary. Kirk, the planet is dead. There is no possibility of life there. As we understand life, Saragon, and I am dead as... M- and I am as dead as my planet. Does that frighten you, James Kirk? For well, it does. If you let if you let what is left of me perish, then all of you, my children, all of mankind must perish too. Captain's log, stardate 4768.3. The Enterprise is in orbit about above a planet. The surface of centers tell us devoid of all life. A world destroyed and dead at least in half a million years. Yet, from it comes a voice, the energy of pure thought, telling us something has survived here for those thousands of centuries. Bridge, Kurt dating, dating log. Since its orientation and contact with alien intelligences is our planning mission, I've decided to risk the potential dangers. Zoom contact. Log entry out. How many how long before Starfleet receives that? You are over three weeks at this distance, sir. Spock Captain. Kirk got something? Spock. Sensors registering some form of energy deep inside the planet. So gone your probes to touch me, Mr Spock. Spock, energy reading only, Captain. No life forms. So gone. I've locked your transporter device on my code ordinance. Please come to us. Rescue us from oblivion. Well, coming from deep under the planet surface, Captain. Under at least one hundred miles of rock, solid rock. Sargon, I will make it possible for your transporter to beam you that deep beneath the surface. Have no fear. Spock, we're in the chamber now. Oxygen, nitrogen, atmosphere. Suitable for human life support. Kirk, Lieutenant Ura. Have the Dr. McCoy report to transporter room in 10 minutes with a standard landing party equipment. You are, yes, sir. Uh, Kirk, Spock? Spock, Captain, I do not wish to inspect whatever this is that... Li- I do wish to inspect whatever this is that lived that long ago. Kirk, I would like to have my science officer... Of, 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 uh, I would like to have my science officer with me on something as unusual as this. But if it is a full, bo- full of unknowns, we can't risk... Both us being off the ship. Lights go out. So the old power's gone off, sir. Kirk, on the other hand, perhaps the Saragon would like you to come with us. Power is restored. Spot, fascinating. So they're all normal. No damage at all. Kirk, I see. Will you transport down with us, Mr. Spock? Spock, eventually, Captain. Kirk, Mr. Sulu, you have the comm. Transporter room. Jim, McCoy, Jim, why no briefing on this? I'd at least like to know what we're getting into. Kirk, easy bones. As long as you know there's something down there, you know as much as we do. The rest is only guesses. Scott, I don't like it, sir. The transporter coordinates preset by an alien of some sort. 
You could materialize inside solid rock. McCoy inside solid rock spot unlikely. These coordinates called audience correspond with the location of subterranean chamber. Kirk, I have a feeling that they or it could destroy us just standing here if they or it wanted to. Moho, they or it, Kirk, who are you? Moho, Doctor and Moho, astrobiologist, biology. Well, I was ordered to report here for landing party duty. Kirk, by whom? Moho, strange, I'm not sure, sir. Well, I'm not a liar, Captain. I did receive an order report here for duty. Spock, I'm sure she did, Captain. Just as you received an order for, to bring me along. Kirk, oh yes. McCoy, let's get back to the solid rock business. Just how much rock are we going to go through? Spock, approximately 112.37 miles, Doctor. McCoy, miles? Are you joking? Kirk, no, we're not. Let's go. Sargon, please stand ready. I will operate your controls. Kirk, Doctor, if you prefer to stay behind, McCoy, no, no. Be useful as long as you It'll be useful as long as you're going down. I might as well take a medical look, whatever this is. Then the party and two gods gather on the pads. Scotty stands sulking with arms crossed. Jones Porter activates and just sends the four officers somewhere. Chamber, Spot, Captain, the security guards. Kirk, Kirk here, Scott. Can you hear me, Captain? Kirk. Yes, Scotty. I shouldn't be able to, to this, able to, to this deep inside the planet. Perhaps this has been arranged for us too. Security guard up there. Security transporter room. Scott, they're fine. They just didn't, didn't we, just didn't we dematerialize. Chamber, Scott. Don't like it, sir. Kirk, no problem yet. Maintain alert, Kirk, out. Mahal. As for your report, Captain, a fraction richer in oxygen than usual for us, but otherwise normal. Spock, this vault was constructed about half a million years ago. At the same time, the planet surface was destroyed. If our sensors reading are accurate, Kirk, composition of walls. Spock, the ally of substance completely unknown to me, but stronger and harder than anything I've measured before. Mahal, all readings are off the scale, Captain. McCoy, the air seems fresh. It must be recycled somehow. Kirk, is that uh, for us, or does it need fresh air? Power slides back to reveal a much larger area, with rock walls and a glowing spear, elegantly poised and an angled support. Sagal, the glowing spear. Welcome, I am Sagon. Spock Sagon, would I what it would it harm you if I Sargon, you may use your tricycles, called us, Mr. Spock. A well use of show energy, no substance. Sealed in this receptacle, the essence of my mind, Spock, pure energy. Matter without form, Kirk, impossible. McCoy, not for one. No, but you once had a body of some type. Sargon, a body much as yours. My children are low. Our minds are indifferently greater. Kirk, that's twice you referred to us as my children. Sargon, because it's possible. You're not our descendants, Captain Kirk. Six thousand years ago, our vessels were colonizing this galaxy, just as your starships have been now have now begun to explore the, that vastness. As you now leave your own sea of uh, distant planets, so we left our sea behind us. Perhaps your own legends of Adam and Eve are just two of our travelers. The how our beliefs and our studies indicate that Earth and our planet Earth evolved independently. Spock, that would intend, however, to explain certain elements of Vulcan prehistory. So, then, in either case, I do not know if it was, it was so long ago. The records of our targets are lost in calculism, which we loosened upon ourselves. Kirk of War, so I'm going to struggle with such goals and unleashing such power that you could not comprehend. Kirk, that perhaps your intelligence wasn't so great, Sargon. You faced a similar crisis in our early nuclear age, found the wisdom not to destroy ourselves, Sargon. We survived a primitive nuclear era, my son. But there does, but there comes to all races an ultimate crisis which you have yet to face. Kirk, I don't understand. Sargon, one day our minds become so powerful we don't dare to think of ourselves as gods. Kirk, you said you wanted our help. 
What is it you wish? Kirk staggers back slightly, but there's a high-pitched sound. As he head is flung back, Scott, Buck, just a moment, Doctor. Kirk, I am so gone. McCoy, where's our captain? Where's Jim Kirk? Kirk, he is unharmed. I have taken his body to demonstrate. McCoy, drawing the faintest phaser. Don't, won't go along with this. Back to where you were, so gone, or wherever you are. Look, if you refuse it, Doctor, what do you propose to do with your phaser? That is still Jim's body. Jim Kirk convulses briefly, and the spirit has dimmed a lot. Kirk lungs filled with air again. The sea again. Hump, heart pumping, ad- artery surging of blood again. Half a million years to be again. Your captain has an excellent body, Dr. McCoy. I compliment you both in the condition in which you maintain it. But what are your plans for it? Can you exchange places again when you wish? Kirk, have no fear. Your captain is quite unharmed. No, his mind generates insignificant energy for him to speak. From where, from there, as I do. But, Doctor, <coughs> the court, the whole. Yes, I have the same readings. McCoy, are you aware what's happening to his body? Heart action doubled, temperature 104 degrees. The whole, he'll die if you don't leave his body soon. But what is it you want from us? Kirk, in the next room, there are other receptacles. There are other two of us that survived. You, Doctor, and Mahal, and you, Mrs. Bot, will require your bodies also. You must have Captain Kirk and you, so that he may live again. Small chamber. There are a group of boxes on the wall containing spears. Only two are light. Kirk, even for us, oh, oh, half a million years is almost too long to wait. Two others still survive. Harak and Felicia. Felicia, my Felicia. I promise you, please, you survived with me. Forgive me. It had been so very long, Spock. When a struggle came, which devastated your planet? Kirk, only the best minds were chosen to survive. Felicia, my wife, as you may have guessed. Harak, from the other side. Realizing our mistake, we attempted to penetrate both sides. We built this chamber here in order to preserve our essence in this fashion. Spock, fascinating. Kirk, we knew the seed that we had planted on our planet to take root. And one day you would build vessels as we did. And one day you would come here, Spock. These others, they are stored differently than you. But if you task to remain in that receptacle out there, Kirk, and search heavens with my mind, probing, waiting, probing, and one day my mind touched your vessel and brought you here, Mahal, so you could steal our bodies from us? Kirk, to steal? To take away them from you? No, no, my children. You must understand. We mean only that you should lend us your bodies for a short time, McCoy. I to destroy them just as you burn that one up now. Heart beats 262. Block. Entire metallic, metallic rate. Conjures running high. Kirk, I will turn your captain. To before the body limit has been reached, Spock. Our body, Sergeant? For what purposes? For what purpose? Kirk, to build, to build homeoid robots. You must borrow your bodies long enough to have the use of that, your hands, your fingers. Buck, then you intend to construct mechanical bodies, move your minds into them, into them and then return to your old bodies with, to us? A whole, we have engineers, technicians. Why can't they build your robots for you? Kirk, no, our methods, our skills are far beyond your abilities. It's time. I help him back to spare a Saragon spear chamber. Kirk briefly convulses with pain, and the spear grows bright again, and he falls to his knees. McCoy, is that you, Jim? Or not? Or the nod. God, his metallic weight is back to normal, Spot Captain. Do you know what happened? Do you remember any part of it? Kirk, yes, Saragon borrowed my body, a floating time and space, McCoy. It doesn't appear to be harmed, physically, anyway. Kirk, Spot, remember... I- I remember when Sargon and I exchanged, we passed each other. For an instance, we were one. I knew. I know him now. I know what he is and what he wants. I don't fear him. Okay, that's the most ridiculous statement I ever heard. Alien partly practically hijacks your body and then corks you into a bottle and McCall. I'm afraid I must agree with Dr. McCoy. You sh- could be suffering from a form of false euphoria. Kirk, Sargon. Sargon, I understand, my son. Go to your vessel. All you evolved must agree to this. I've all these centuries, we can wait. 
a few more hours, McCoy. What if he should decide against you? So well, then you must go as freely as you came. Beefy Will Scott, you're coming to going to do to what? Are you all right in the head, Doctor? McCoy, no comment. Kirkwood, simple transference, their minds and ours. McCoy, quite simple. Happens every day. Kirk, Spagotti, I need you to approve of two. Get your work with him. Finish, finishing. They have all they need to make their android robots. You won't be working with them. You'll be working with, with us, our bodies. It'll be inside us. It will be. McCoy, it all seems rather indecent to me. A whole. I'm not so certain of that, Doctor. It is scientifically fascinating. Spock, once inside their mechanical bodies, engineer, they can leave this planet, travel back with us. With all their knowledge, mankind can leap ahead 10,000 years, Kirk Bones. They show us medical advances, miracles you never dreamed possible. It's got the engineering advances, vessels this size, engines the size of wal- wal- walnuts. Scott, ah, you're joking. Spock, no, he's not. McCoy, they're giants. Green six beside them. They can destroy us without a meaning to. All he wants is a body or a captain or a second. A command too. Coincidence? Kirk, they've selected us. The most compatible bodies, McCoy. Well, that's, that's, what's your attitude on that, Doctor? Well, how, well, if we agree, I'm willing to host Frieza's mind. The scientist's opportunity is an extraordinary one of, of, of experimentation, observation. Spot, Scott, a star ship of size of a walnut. That's impossible. I don't suppose there'd be any harm in looking into over diagrams on it. Cut bones, you, you could stop all this by saying no. That's why I called you all in here together. We'll all be deeply involved. You must be, uh, it must be an animal, an anonymous, an anonymous, an anonymous. McCoy, I still want, I, st- I still want one question answered. My, to my satisfaction, why? No list of possible miracles, but simple, basic, understandable. Why? That, that underworld is all danger. Let's, well, no kid outside there is. Let's not let us kid ourselves. There is no potential dangers in this. Kurt, they used to say if man could fly, he'd have wings, but he did fly. Discovered he had to. You wish that the first, the first moon, the first apostle mission? For the mission hadn't reached the moon, or hadn't done, gone on to Mars, into the nearest star. Like saying you wish to still operate with sculptors and sold your patience. I would call. You got, cut, got, like your great, great, great grand grandfather used to. I am, I am used to. I'm just command, I will order this. But I do not, because Dr. McCoy is right in pointing out. There was danger of potential in any contact with life and intelligence as fantastical the advance as this, but I must point out the possibilities. Potential for knowledge and advancement is equally great. Risk risk is our business. It's what the starship is all about. That's why we were aboard her. You must dis- dissent without prejudice. Do I hear and a negative nod? Silence around the table. Engineer, stand by to beam. Our head, aboard, three receptacles. Sick bay, the three volunteers are lying on beds, with their spears on the tables beside them. Okay, the extreme power of your alien mind will drive the heart action dangerously high. Body functions will race many times in normal metabolism. So we're going to have to monitor this very carefully. Tell me, yes, sir, McCoy. Well, I guess we're ready. There will ever be, Jim. Kirk, ready, Sagon. Beers emit a straight, brilliant light. A patient's twitch, then the spears dim. Kirk, with equi Sagon voice, the transference is complete. Chevel bombolic rate is double and rising, Dr. Spock. A green and equi voice. Hello. Ah, you're a lovely female. A pleasant sight to wake up to after half a million years, Chapel. Thank you. Spock, you're welcome. Oh, I've forgotten what it is to feel even to breathe again, Sagon. Kirk, here in this body? My oh, I am not displeased, my husband. Your body is not unlike that which was your own. Kirk and I am too, um, too unpleased, beloved. My oh, 
after so long, so very long, curt kiss. So you do, Spock. It is an excellent body, Doctor. I seem to have re- received the best of the three strength, hearing, eyesight, all far above your human norms. And suppose the Vulcans never conquered your race. McCoy, Vulcans worship peace above all, Herrock. Spock, yes, of course, just as we do, Doctor. The whole Teresa, Teresa uh, collapses and he help her back into the bed. McCoy, nurse, then Kirk, so gone, gets dizzy. Trouble, Doctor. McCoy, Herrock. You better get back to bed too, Spock. It will be unnecessary, Doctor. The Vulcan body is accustomed to the higher metabolism. McCoy, so go on. It, don't want, it, does, it won't work. We've got to get out before you kill them. Kirk, we evacuate at once. Until you administer a modern reduction injection. McCoy, McCoy what? Spock, I prepare the formula, Sir so Gon. Kirk, I'll wreck your condition. Spock, I continue in his body for several hours. Kirk Fortunate, we vacate at once. They, is, they are as good as their word. Spock, is your one who assists me to chapel? You take me to your first famous chemical laboratory. They leave. Kirk, Bones, what? McCoy, is very, it was close, Jim. You both barely got back alive. Unless the formula works, we can't risk it again. Pharmacy, Spock. In this formula, we reduce the heart action. A body functions to normal, or the bodies are occupied. You administer one injection in 10 cc's every each hour. Shovel, I understand. Spock, this hypo, will, you will code for Teresa. This one, you'll code mark for me. Chapel, yes, sir. Spock, this one, you administer Captain Kirk, while Sagon is in his body. Chapel, this hypo does not contain the same formula. Spock, no, that's correct. That's since. But since I'm applying it to you for, to administer each injection's, no one else will notice. Trouble, without the same formula, Captain Kirk would die. He touches her forehead. Spock, what are you, what were you saying? Trevor, I was wanted to say something. I've forgotten what it was. But yes. Were you, were you, well, you were about to say that you watch your hair of the formula and fit each, fill each of the hypos. Trevor, what, yes, that's what I was, that was it. I formed Dr. McCoy. That each is properly filled with for each patient. Spock, very good. You see, Sir Gon would not permit me to keep this body if it was therefore necessary for you to kill your captain so that it could have gone. Sir Gon would die with him. Enterprise Medical Log, start eight four seven nine six nine point one. Three union minds now inhabit the bodies of Captain Kirk. Science Sir Officer Spock. Dr. Anne McCoy, sick by McCoy, is playing the construction of android robots is underway. All his proceedings suspected and promised. I can find no reason for concern, but yet I feel with foreboding. Laboratory, Sagon and Felisa are working when their hands touch. Behold, Sagon, I remember. A day long ago, we sat beside a silver lake. The air was scented with flowers of our planet. Kogo, remember, you held your hand like this. He kisses as Spock comes in. Kirk, I think it's best not to remember so well. Buck, in two days you have your own hands, Felicia. Mechanically inefficient and quite human-like looking. Android robot hands. Of course, hands without feeling. Enjoy the taste of life while you can. Kirk, our minds will have survived. As androids, we can move among the people who do live, teaching them, helping them not to make the errors we did in the hole. What is it, Sagom? Kirk, nothing. Our next injection will reinvigorate me. Do not be concerned. Sit by. Chapel is holding the hypos. Trying to remember something very important. McCoy, nurse. How are you are the last metabolic readings on our patients? At Chapel, you find them excellent, doctor. Well, the normal, McCoy. Is there something wrong, Mr. Chapel? Chapel, uh, yes, I had something to say. I can't seem to remember. McCoy, regarding our, regarding our McCoy, regarding our patients? Trevor, yes. It must be it. I'm so I'm so pleased the way they are responding, Doctor. Phone is working perfectly. McCoy, you look tired, Miss Chapel. Perhaps you care for me to administer the last few injections. Chapel? Tired? Well not at all, Doctor. Thanks for asking. These are puzzled McCoy. Laboratory, Mahal, Felicia. Looking into a, a reflection of a metallic surface, a Scott comes in, a small doodad dead. 
recall. Thank you. You prepared the negotiation articles for drawing so gone supplied. It's got all the good I do, do yeah. Fancy name, but how will something that looks like a drop of jelly make this thing work? You, you need micro gears and pulley and that, what that does. That does what a muscle does. Oh, it'll be highly efficient. Scott, I tell you, lady, this thing that won't work, Spock. And you're, it will have twice the strength of agility your body engineer. And will last a thousand years. I'm assuming you stop wasting your, your, your time. That's a complete it. Scott leaves as Spock l- laughs. Spock, a thousand year in prison, Felicia. And when it wears out, we build another one. And we lock ourselves into it. For another thousand years, another and another. So God has closed his mind to a better way with these bodies, behold. They're not our bodies, Hedronok. Buck, then you woke in this, this body, Felicia. You said how good it was to breathe again, to have eyes and see again, to feel, to live and feel again. Felicia, just think how much we can do for mankind. Are these bodies too much to ask for in turn? Would you prefer this? The whole, no, I'm beginning to hate it. She rushes out and Spock smirks. Briefing room. Kirk, sick bay. McCoy, sick bay. McCoy. Kirk's are gone here. McCoy, I am in your deck, sick briefing room. The enters. McCoy, you sound terrible. Wait for me. The whole, so gone, what is it? Kirk, nothing important for tea, perhaps. See, she sees what is on the monitor. The whole, for Heather X. Fulner. Kirk, yes, I waited. Be certain there was a, a, no error. If all is correct, don't be concerned. It is ex- It is an excellent body. There, you see, I feel right already. The whole in time, his body will become accustomed to us. Husband, injections will no longer be necessary. Kirk, that will take months, perhaps years. We have that choice, Felicia. The whole, husband. Feel the touch of my hand, husband. Let no beloved, if, if, if we tumult... If we torment each other ourselves, oh, beloved, what was that the word mean to machine, Kirk? Our thoughts will intertwine. Oh, will they, husband? Will they intertwine like this? Can your two minds press close like this? Can Robert limbs do this? They kiss, then Kirk falls gently to the floor. So gone. Where is it? McCoy in chapel, enter. McCoy, hypo. Behold, doctor, help him. McCoy, he's dead. Medical log. Died eight four seven seven zero point three. Do I list one death or two? While Kirk's body dies, Sagon is too far distant for his receptacle to transfer back. Sagon is dead, but is Captain Kirk dead? His body is, but my his consciousness is still receptacle into which he is transferred earlier. Sick bay. The medical team hook Kirk's body up to the life support machine. Nurse, all his vital organs are now working, Doctor. Okay, yes. We can keep them going for a few weeks or a month. For all the good it'll do. Laboratory. There's a shiny plastic person on the table now. Look at the hall. Why you pretend to work on that thing, Hallerick? You know you never intended to leave Spock's body. Spock, this is your new home, Felicia. Once occupied, I'd add favorable features. Some texturing. You no doubt want the huge mechanism at least appear to be a woman. It tests its hand movement. It's ready, Felicia. Oh, oh, no. Spock, you have no excuse to keep this real body any longer. So gone. We have acquired your enter the mechanism immediately. Mahal, I cannot live in that thing. Sit by Mahal, Doctor. McCoy, yes, Mahal. Would you would you like to save your Captain Kirk? Mahal. McCoy, but you said that was impossible. Mahal, we have many powers so gone did not permit us to use. You thought them too tempting to us. If body pleases me, I tend to keep it. McCoy. McCoy, I see. Henry tends to keep Spock's body, of course. The whole Harry's plan was his own affair. Wish only to exist in peace as a living woman. McCoy, if you're asking my approval, the whole, I require your silence. Only you and I will know that Dr. Mahal had not returned to her body. Is that worth your captain's life, Doctor? We take what we wish. Neither you or this ship, no all worlds, had the power to stop us. Well, you know, when either Jim nor I can trade a body we don't own, it happens to belong to a young woman. McCoy, why are you hardly, who you hardly know, almost a stranger to you? McCoy, I will not pled all flesh. 
I'm a physician, the whole. Physician, in contrast to what we are, you're a prancing savage medicine man. You dare defy one who should be on your knees, worship him, I should destroy you with a single fault. A coy, suddenly withering in pain as he's surrounded by flames. The whole stop. The plains, flames are gone. Sagar was right. Temptation of inner of living body are too great. Forgive me. Sagar, I am pleased, my beloved. It's good you have found the truth within yourself. Mahal, Sagon, where are you? I thought you were destroyed by Henrik. Sagon, I have power, even Hallerak did not suspect, beloved. Mahal, yes, I see, I understand. Just as we, just as we were, would have placed our conscience within the robots, Sagon has placed his into your vessel. The call, travel, Doctor? Mahal, Doctor Levis, Sagon has a plan. We have much work to do. McCoy's office. McCoy leaves the room and door shuts and locked behind him. Ship shakes as he activates his dice monitor. McCoy, this is sick, babe. Get me. The door opens and the chapel walks out, staring blankly ahead. McCoy, no chapel. What's the, what in the devil? Sick, babe. He comes back, goes back into the ward. McCoy, Jim, are you right? Kirk, yes, I find bones. McCoy, Felice, the hole. She now is to gone, Doctor. I'm in the hole, back in my own body. Then he sees a black, free, blackened, and broken spears, McCoy. Jim receptacles. Box conscience was in one of them. Kirk, it was necessary. McCoy, what are you talking about? There's no spot to return his body. You killed a loyal officer, your best friend. Kirk bones prepare a hypo. The fastest deadly is poison of organs. Box conscience is gone. You must kill his body. The thing and the... The thing in it. Bridge, your hair is screaming in terror before collapsing across the console. Chapel is attending, then rigid by the captain's chair. But must I take a, make example of you, Helm? Kirk, Miss El, Mel, Well, and McCoy enter. Spot, plain, Captain. And you, my dear? The Kirk, my whole double over. McCoy dashes to Spock's side, and ready to reject him. But fortunately, Doctor. I know every thought of every mind around me. See to chapel. Take the hypo from him. Inject him with it. But she injects Spock, quite correct, instead. He leaps from his seat. Spock falls. He should to try and further another place, another body. He whirls around. Spock's are gone. No. So gone, please, let me. Let me transfer. He falls to the floor and his victims are free from their pain. Kirk, Spock, my friend Spock. If there's any bit... There, there had been only a, a, ever way, Sagon. I could not allow you to sacrifice what, sac, your sacrifice of one so close to you. Lights dim and glow. The chapel wobbles. McCoy, Jim, Box stands up. Kirk, you're alive. McCoy, there's enough poison in that hypo to kill ten Vulcans. Sagon, no doctor. I allowed you to believe that to be true. So Hallerick would read your thoughts and believe it also. McCoy, Sagon. But it seems, Doctor, the injection was only enough to cause her con- consciousness. So go on, but Henrik believed and fled the body. He destroyed Kirk. But your vessel was destroyed too. What has you, where was your consciousness kept? But the police Henrik would not at least suspect, Captain. Trouble, that is why I was summoned into sit by Doctor. Mrs. Spock's consciousness was placed in me. We shared consciousness together. So go on, we know we cannot permit ourselves to exist in your world. My children, Felicia and I must also depart in the deliberation, Kirk. Is there any way we can help you, Sagon? Sagon, yes, my son. You can allow Felicia and me to share our bodies again at the last moment together. My whole nods. I go over to the station, it's white station, for light trick and voice changes. The whole oblivion together does not frighten me, beloved. Promise with me together, Kirk, I promise, beloved. The whole together forever. Kirk, forever, beloved, forever. Embrace and kiss. A light thing happens again during it. Well, Kirk, well, I'm sure that's gone and appreciated your cooperation, Dr. Mahal. Mahal, yes, I was happy to cooperate, Captain. Chapel, it was beautiful. <laughs>